ready whenever you are. Go for it, Don. Okay. All right. Good morning, everybody. My name is Noah Price. Uh, I would like to tell you a little bit about slacklining, um, primarily history, how slacklines work, how kind of the differences in styles that it's now merged into, um, and a little bit about why I do it. I started slacklining in last year in the springtime at my high school, which I quickly got kicked out of. <laughs> for, or not out of the high school, but off the school grounds for slacklining. I then took it to my backyard where I did it pretty much every day for an hour uh, after school. After I got my confidence up, I started taking it to parks uh, where I really enjoyed meeting people that like to slackline as well as showing people that had never done it before, a little bit about it, how to do it, um, also showing little kids. Um, and so now I'm here, kind of telling you guys um, about why I love the sport. It began in Yosemite Valley with rock climbers. They would get bored in the evenings after climbs um, and wanted something to do, so they took webbing, which was previously used for anchors for their climbs, and they stretched it up between two trees and started walking on it. And they quickly found how much uh, it helped their balance, and, and then it moved into its own sport, um, which has quickly emerged into two different, um, kind of two different genres of slack lining. So this right here is a high line, or, or a, just a traditional slack line. People typically use it for high lines, where they will anchor in using uh, a harness and a leash right here. Uh, typically, it'll be like a, uh, just a steel ring, but for this purpose, just so I can show you how you clip it on. And then you'll walk, and it slides along behind you. If you fall, it'll catch you. If you guys want to pass that around and look at it, here's this. While you guys are doing that, I'll just show you a quick kind of anatomy of the slack line. There are two anchors, these steel poles, they need to be really strong because slack line generates a lot of force, not only while it's resting here, but also when I'm on it, I pull down and it creates something called a vector pull, which is basically a V, and as I push down, it creates a compounding force pulling in, which can be really powerful. So we need really strong anchors. Um, these right here connect it to the anchors with the carabiner, which helps it lie flat. It's at both ends, as well as my tensioning system. Uh, there are a lot of different tensioning systems. For uh, one that's low on the ground, you can use a simple um, Z-drag, which is just a friction um, hitch. And what happens is you run it through underneath each other, and then you can pull this way, and it gives you a mechanical advantage over the line, as well as it holds it there. Um, so from this, that generated a new a new style, which was the wider line, which I'll show you, I'll quickly take this down. At this end, I have um, a quick release, which I can pull out and drop down. That's really important because when there's that much force on the line, there can, it can be really tough to get this out. So it's important to have like a quick release that you can really put a lot of force on down there, and that'll help you take it out. This line, which is more of the freestyle, the second um, kind of production of slacklining is, as you can see, a lot thicker. So it would be more similar to, this would be like walking, like you saw how much it moved around underneath my feet. This would be more like, what it feels like is like tipping a two by four up on its end and walking on it. It doesn't move a lot, and you have to really balance yourself on top of the line instead of putting the line underneath you. People use this for freestyle tricks. Um, there's a lot more pop in it, 
So you can really get force and get up in the air. Here you can't really because you got the ceiling. Um, but that's how this works. This is a ratchet. Um, it's pretty much just the same as any construction or industrial ratchet strap, um, except slackliners have quickly taken it, put their name on it, um, and now string it up between uh, things and walk on it. So that's the style. And now I'd really like to get into why I'm talking to you, and it's why I love doing this sport, and it's the focus. Um, as you can see, it, it really, you have to focus a lot, and you see that in the two different styles of highliners and uh, freestyle liners. Even though they're doing really different motions, the, the freestylers, they're up in the air all the time. Most of the time, they're not even on their feet. They're bouncing off different parts of the body on the line, doing flips. And the highliners, they like they have one goal of just walking to the other side or back. Um, but you see it mostly in their eyes that they're always looking forward and they, they're incredibly focused. Um, and that's why I do it. I really enjoy the focus that it brings to me. Um, and it like the the goal for me is to be able to rule out everything else that's going on in my life or whatever, um, and be, practice focusing on one thing. Earlier, I was talking to you guys while I was on the line. That was really difficult because I had to not only have really good focus, but also be able to talk to you guys. And that comes with skill. Um, the skill, I believe it's a skill to be able to focus, um, to not only focus on one thing and quickly go back and forth to be able to be doing one thing and then be like, oh, I need, really need to focus on this activity. Um, maybe it's for safety, maybe for us, since we're um, in the outdoors a lot, being outdoor leaders, um, we'll be having fun, joking around the campfire, and then um, something might happen, and someone might get hurt, and you have to quickly just snap into like mode, and you need to focus on what is at hand, or you're, you're having fun on the river, and you're going down just a nice floaty stretch and then you get into a rapid and you need to focus, right? No more joking around. Um, so I think this not only, not only does it um, help with your like physical ability, your physical skill of balance and your mu legs and your, mus your muscles and your legs and things like that, but it trains your mind mostly um, in how to control your focus. So right now, I'd like you guys, if you guys could go around and introduce yourself and let me know an activity that either you do currently or you'd like to do that you believe requires your absolute focus. That when you're doing that activity, you don't think about anything else. Um, you're not, your mind's not wandering off. But just like me, for me, I, like when I'm slacklining, it's really hard for me to think about anything else. Like I'll be focusing on just the slap line, whether I'm trying to do a trick, or I'm trying to walk to the other side, that's what I focus on. So if you guys wouldn't mind going around, just really quick, like 10 seconds, just uh, your name. Some, some, uh, TJ, uh, one would be pull vault. Best to focused on all the stuff. There's a lot of different movements that you gotta know. Balance is key to Okay. You gotta balance on the pull. Awesome. My name's Steve, I pick fly fishing. Mm -hmm. right on. My name's Dawes. Um, I'd say Kandana, the hammer with the ball on it. Okay. My name's Jess. I'd probably say fly fishers, fishing and general keys. My name's Tyson. Uh, I'd say probably just like out shooting. It's focused so you don't mess up or somebody or shoot something else. Mm -hmm. Joey and Um, so we just all heard many different things that are, can require your complete focus. Today I just like to show you a little bit about the slack line, but a lot about how slack lining is not the only thing that requires your focus, but just a tool that maybe you guys would like to try someday um, to not only help your physical 
abilities, but also to train your mind to be stronger um, and to be able to focus when you do. So thank you very much.